Okay, we're yeah, we are at the second phase of the war. We're starting to have the heavy hitters starting to, to get their attacks in. And by heavy hitters, I, I don't mean uh, the top part of the clan. I'm talking about you know the town hall tens, uh, 9.5 tens. We have let's see, one, two, three, four, five attacks here. We're probably going to get about 15 attacks in, in in combination between all the videos. This one right here is, is Thunders. Thanks, phone. Shut your mouth while I'm doing this. It doesn't listen to me. Like everything else in my life. So, this right here is, is Monk Thunders. This is a max bowler attack. I, I guess that's what it's called. Uh, this, this attack is two sets of bowlers with healers on them. Starting off at two points in the base. They usually start off in two corners. And then as you break into the base, they send the rest of the bowlers into the core, along with the heroes, along with the warden. Get into the core of the base. Use your use your warden ability just as you're hitting the inferno towers. Use use the, the rage spell, the heal spell on the back in Inferno. And before you know it, another base is smoked. Um I've watched Bonk Thunders do I, I I'm gonna say twelve attacks now. And I think he's three start every single one. And uh, this is a mini for another person in the clan. Um, what an impressive war log. Uh, there's a lot of guys in, in GB Elite. They're real comfortable doing some of these drop down attacks. Um, but if you look at where he is in the lineup, number 36, and who he's attacking, number 22, these aren't all drop down attacks. This is a drop up with a town hall 11. So again, uh, the war weight in GB Elite has been um, thought about meticulously, and these guys have done an excellent job in putting themselves in a position to win. That's the best way for me to say it. I know that there's complaining out there with uh, with war weight and how much there's how much tampering there is in it, but after long considerations, meeting a lot of different clans doing as much as we can in our clan as well it's, it's going to be on supercell to weed out the, the clans that are going way too excessive with the engineering and to find a happy medium for everyone to play on um i i know that there's an attack on the point fives right now from what i've heard so we have a lot of people that thought point fives were the way to go as as, as far as they consider that to be a fair way to upgrade uh, by the way while i'm running my mouth is Neon Knight. Um, Neon Knight's one of the elite attackers in the clan. <clears throat> he likes to do the the um, the Pekka Bowler healer healer, and um, this is an awesome attack for for any of you that's never seen this attack. Pay close attention to how he gets these how he gets these uh, he he gets the heavy troops into the core, and he plows through the base, and you'll you'll notice that. I've watched several attacks uh, on this exact same attack strategy and they all seem to do the same thing. They don't always go straight through the core and out the back end of the core. They usually get up into the core, they do some damage in the core, then they hook a left or a right and you'll get a big chunk of the base taken out. And then what he'll do is he'll send the, the hog riders in at the end and and you'll notice too he's not coming in the back side with the hog riders. He's going to go over an area that he's already gone through to make sure that he has all the giant bombs cleared out. Um, he's saving a couple heal spells, and this is an overpowering attack. Uh, this is a Town Hall 9 attack. This attack can be done in Town Hall 9 or Town Hall 10. Uh, the only thing that you have to be really careful of is how you play the Pekkas, because they don't have that range like the Bowlers or the Queen does. So, you can, be, you can run into trouble, because I've tried this attack. I've used this attack, um, and I've personally run into trouble with the Pekka not being able to protect the healers. That is not... Uh, what Neon Knight does. Neon has got this attack down. It's a wrap when he used it. Um, great attack by Neon Knight. Okay, so as Neon Knight's finishing up with his attack, just want to say a few words about what's happened so far. Uh, want to th say thanks to GB Elite. It's been a great experience for me personally. It's been a great experience for the Damage Inc. guys. Uh, you know, w both clans will walk away with this with something. Uh, GB Elite will walk away with a win. And Damage Inc. will walk away with a, lo a lot of information for us to go back to our clan and process because 
there's been a lot of things that have been done differently in this war than we would have done it in our war. Um, you know, we we both have a lot of similarities between the two clans. We do a lot of things about the same, have a lot of things in common. But they have a real methodical patience that they use when facing these clans. Whereas we did a little more scrambling around when we would have to, especially against these elite clans that we've had to face. So uh, we have some, some real good information to go home and process and and... We'll probably make a few changes here in the near future, just FYI. Uh, this next attack was by, by Almino, which was pretty funny. Almino came into the chat after talking about how much the air attacks are hated. And it was kind of funny because this is a perfectly executed air attack. He came in with the kill squad, wiped out two air defenses, took out the clan castle troops before the, before the air part of the uh, attack even started. Then he came in with the air part of the attack. He drops the haste spells before he even puts the troops in. So, I mean, these troops hustle on top of the air defenses. The balloons wipe out uh, three or four defenses before they even get to the air defense. And uh, take out the air defenses. And notice that notice the timing. You, you, don't want, you don't want the Lava Hounds to last too much longer. You need them to pop in order, for you to, in order to three star these bases. So it's a mistake that I've made in the past. It's a mistake everyone makes. They they try to protect the the lava hounds too much, and if you do that, and if, and if they don't pop, then you end up with a 94, 95 percent two star instead of a three star attack with all those pups cleaning out for you. So uh, excellent timing. Uh, just a great overall attack by Almino. Another one. Another one of their. Um, excellent attackers they have so many good attackers on, on this squad that uh, I just can't say enough to all the t different talented players they have and you see I, I think I'm gonna fast forward through this a little bit because this is this is a, over and done with We've got plenty of troops left uh, got a spell left And that was not a, that was not a, a weak base. I mean, I, I know the walls aren't exactly maxed out, but they they didn't they didn't upgrade the walls for a reason. They were using that uh, to try to help their their clan war weight. Okay, next attack with Julian. This was one of the first attacks on the upper bases. This is the Gobola Loon attack, and uh, basically this is a, another two phase attack where they'll come in. They'll take. They're trying to take out cer certain objectives with the ground with the ground troops, and then they'll come in with the air portion of the attack. So basically, they're going to come in with the heal the the heroes, come in with bowlers, uh, bring the warden in, and try to take out a good portion of the base with these ground troops, and then they'll bring in the Laloon portion of the attack. And if you notice the timing on the warden ability, as soon as the as soon as the clan castle troops came out and met him, he used the used the warden ability. Gets the queen up close to the clan castle troops. She'll come in and take out the rest of the clan castle troops. It's going to come in and take out at least one of these uh, infernal towers before the air part of the attack even comes in. I believe the queen is going to take out the infernal tower. She does. Now the queen's jumping into, into the core. And again, just great patience in this attack. Brings in two, two, two lava hounds. Does a surgical attack with the balloons. If you notice, there's, there's two balloons going in on each of the defenses around the outside. So, and what that does is that help that makes it so the defenses can't team up on the, on the balloons. Uh, every one of those defenses, they had to concentrate on on the balloons that were coming after them specifically. So there wasn't there wasn't any of that team up action. That's what takes out the balloons pretty fast. If you get a, a wizard tower and an archer tower both shooting up balloons, they'll they'll knock them out of the sky quick. But if the archer tower is stuck on one set, and then the wizard tower is stuck on one set, they just don't have any time to team up on them and take them out. Well, just got a little update in, in the real life. Apparently, baby Nirvana, my daughter, just cussed out Mama Nirvana, her mother, by accident. Which this goes to show you kids out there that if you swear away from your house, you'll eventually slip up and swear at your parents. And what that does is that changes things from going to the mall to going to the library. So, sucks for her. <laughs> Alright, this next attack, this is the last attack in this video. This is from Michael. Now, Michael is not a regular Damage Inc. Uh, member. He's one of our, um, one of our visiting members. 
Uh, but he's been in several elite clans that have actually, I think he's been in Come and Take It, I believe is the name of it, which is a top 10 clan at one point. Uh, another max player, super, super guy. Uh, another great asset that we've had coming in and out of the clan for a long time. So he gets to take on, I believe it was number 11. And um, he's using the max bowler attack too. And again, he comes in. He, he'll bring the bowlers in. He, he starts off in two different locations, but they actually just bust it through in one location. He pushes it into the core, uses the warden's ability. Um, make sure that he catches both the healers and the bowlers. Wow, I just had deja vu. I must have said this before. Make sure he catches the healers and the bowler with the rage spell. Uh, they push through the core really quickly. I mean, really quickly in this attack. And now the bowlers are starting to thin out a little bit, but he's still got the queen that hasn't even used her ability yet. Uh, still got, has a healer up protecting those bowlers and he has just wrecked this base the warden's up The warden has got, got that long range where he's literally shooting over walls uh, four or five tiles away over the walls and It looks like he's got seven or eight bowlers left the queen has not used her ability yet So this base is wrecked. It's done Great attack by Michael now he used he used uh, the double EQ and by that, that's the double quad EQ. He uses four earthquakes twice in the base. And what that does is that makes it to where these troops have no obstacles. They have nowhere, they have no walls that they have to fight with. They have nowhere to go but straight through the base. So, video two is over with. Appreciate everyone for watching. Uh, we're actually in the middle of recording part three, which will be the, the Town Hall 11. So stay tuned for that. Appreciate everyone. It's been easy. Take care. Yeah.